Now to the ABC's health reporter, Dr. Dr. Norman Swan. As we here at Sky have reported for the last two and a half years, he's been wrong so many times with his alarmist COVID claims that we thought we'd seen it all. Well, sadly, we were wrong. ABC News Breakfast this week. Showing that the risk of multi-organ damage um, with repeated infection either just keeps on, it doesn't go down with repeated infection, it either stays the same or goes up. And this is the problem, and it's not strongly related to the severity of the infection that you get. You know, and my, my, my view is that it's too much of a coincidence that Shane Warne and the uh, Labour senator in Victoria uh, died not long after a, a COVID infection. I mean, people are reporting sudden death um, after a COVID infection. It's not benign. Now, that was completely left field, even for Swan. Both Shane Warne and Kimberly Kitching, the Labour senator whom Swan was referring to, died earlier this year of suspected heart attacks. 2GB's Ben Fordham. This guy is supposed to be the most respected health expert working at the National Broadcaster. He's used his platform to speculate like a gossip columnist about why two people have passed away. Two people he didn't know, two people he never treated. There is no evidence whatsoever that Shane Warne or Kimberly Kitching died as a result of coronavirus. None whatsoever. And what's more, Kitching never had COVID. And even more bizarrely, Swan doubled down when he was contacted by the Daily Mail, saying these weren't private deaths. They were very public and had an impact on a lot of people who scratched their heads and wondered why. And that could have been a reason. If I thought it was hurtful to the families, I wouldn't have said it. If he wouldn't have made those comments, if he thought this uninformed and wild speculation about their deaths would be hurtful to their loved ones. This was ridiculous in the extreme. By Wednesday, even Swan had conceded he was out of line. Here's the ABC's News Breakfast co-host, Michael Rowland. Dr Norman Swan has issued an apology uh, to suggesting there may be a COVID link to the deaths of Labor Senator Kimberly Kitching and cricket great Shane Warne. Dr Swan says he has personally apologised to Senator Kitching's husband yesterday and that he made an error that he regrets. Where was Norman Swan? I mean, he never misses an opportunity to put his head on TV. And as former Labor leader Mark Latham tweeted, surely Swan should be sacked for incompetence. Oh, sorry, it's the ABC. And as the Sydney Morning Herald reported, the ABC has acknowledged that Swan breached the editorial standards. But the paper also noted, speaking to this masthead, Swan did not resolve from his broader remarks in the context of a newly published study of 48 million adults in England and Wales, warning of an increased risk of heart attacks and stroke in the weeks and months following COVID-19 infection. Now, this was highly misleading for Swan's comment lacked context. Former Deputy Chief Medical Officer Nick Coatesworth. But the study he was referring to that talked about increased uh, arterial thrombosis, so, so clots in the arteries that could potentially lead to a heart attack, that study itself was conducted in 2020. Um, but this was pre-vaccine, Ben. This was pre-vaccine, pre the Omicron waves, pre the amount of hybrid immunity we've got in the community. Finally, the progressive media are acknowledging that Swan's ego is way out of control. In addition to the Nine News mastheads, even The Guardian gave Swan a drubbing. And guess what? He's even made it to The Times in London. Now, we haven't got the time to go through all of the Swan COVID howlers, but let's mention a few briefly. Firstly, his stats about ICU wards. So the predictions at the moment, if, thing, if this hockey stick doesn't change that much, is that uh, we'll be out of ICU beds in New South Wales. Victoria will be behind that by April 10th. Um, and in that case, ICU physicians will be faced with some very difficult decisions. Then he predicted during Sydney's Northern Beaches outbreak in 2020 that contact tracers would soon be overwhelmed and that Greater Sydney should go into lockdown. Wrong again. So the precautionary principle would be locking down Greater Sydney um, and really holding that for about two weeks and being very careful about people moving from Greater Sydney into regional New South Wales. And he falsely claimed last year that residents of Greater Sydney were guinea pigs in an experiment 
that had never been tried anywhere. And I don't think this has been tried anywhere else in the world where you're trying to use vaccination to curve an outbreak. And um, in a sense, New South Wales, the residents of New South Wales are guinea or at least Greater Sydney are guinea pigs in this. Well, finally, Media Watch decided it could no longer turn a blind eye to his tomfoolery. But when you don't have the evidence, speculating about how people died is just not on. As Ben Fordham said this week... Speculating is both disrespectful and dangerous. Because chances are you're going to upset family members and make a fool of yourself. And that is useful advice for everyone in the media, whether they are a doctor or not. Now, Kel, Ben Fordham had it right, didn't he, when he said that it sounds like a gossip columnist yes, yep, on yep, air. Yep. Completely inappropriate. Absolutely. Look, I've worked with Norman. He's a nice bloke to meet and chat with in the corridors. Norman, this might sound a bit cruel. In fact, let's be honest, this is cruel. Um, I'm just reminded of something that Clive Robertson used to say in these kinds of situations. Clive used to say he has delusions of adequacy. Uh, you need to wake up to the fact that you've got a lot... You don't... You want it to be gloomy. You want it to be bad. Right at the beginning of the campaign, uh, the COVID uh, outbreak, he, he told us tens of thousands would die. Norman, we're still here. Those, those numbers that you predicted did not happen. Uh, and so somehow or other, Norman needs to make it bleaker than it is now so that he doesn't look as bad as, he, as the mm. mis, uh, pr predictions made him look. Uh, I don't know how you get uh, Norman to pull his head in when he should pull his head in, and I don't understand why his employer is still putting him in this role of saying, you talk about this for us, instead of saying, no, come on, report research, you know, do the medical report for Radio National and just pull your head in for a bit. That's not happening, and that should be happening. Yeah, Sophie, I think it, it also comes back to what we were talking about before the break. It's this theme of accountability which seems to be missing from the ABC. Any other journalist has a record of making that many mistakes, that many howlers, and to pontificate about the cause of deaths for people you don't know, you haven't seen a medical report, that's something which would end the career of a lot of people. Why do you think that the ABC is still standing behind him? Well, ABC Chair Ita Buttros has described Dr Norman Swan as a national treasure, uh, but I do think these comments he made were incredibly distressing for Shane Warne and Kimberly Kitching's family, as we've heard publicly. Uh, very worrying that a doctor is just coming out with these uh, statements that have no evidence to back them up. Uh, and it was a worry that he didn't quickly correct the record on this, uh, and that caused all sorts of issues for him. Uh, he also didn't make the apology on air himself. I note that Michael Rowland did that. But something I did no notice from the ABC Corporate Affairs Department is they certainly didn't publish the resume with all his awards and accolades and uh, university degrees like they've done for other staff members when they've been in a spot of bother. So he didn't have the backing of them. But uh, <laughs> he's been put on a pedestal. And I think, Jack, in many cases where you showed with those clips, unrightly so, he's been put on this pedestal that, you know, he's the font of all knowledge on COVID. And he's been caught out many times saying things that just haven't turned out to be the case at all. So this did his credibility immense harm this week. Yeah, definitely. And I think the problem as well is speaking with such certainty when even the experts, you know, everyone was getting stuff wrong. A lot of the, the medical experts were getting things wrong throughout this pandemic, but he spoke with such certainty and that is almost the problem.